What is up my aesthetic boys, it's Fresh, back with another video. Today we have a nice long episode of r slash choosing beggars. It's a real mix of stories and shorter posts, and I hope you guys enjoy. 1999 Camry LE, $1,200. $60? Are you serious? $60 for a car. I bought this for $700. I would say $350 is a good deal. I would say $100 is a good deal. I'll add in some old clothes. Nah, I'll pass. Yeah, you're a terrible person. I'm a single father with no money and just want some good stuff for my kid. Screw you. Yeah, sorry about that, but not my problem. I'm sure he does want nice things for his kid. Nothing wrong with that, except that, as OP said, not his problem. We can't afford necessities because we spent our money on wants first. This happened over the winter. I recently saw this woman again and it triggered my memory. I repair game consoles in my free time and as a side business. I was selling a Wii with some kids games around Christmas when a lady asks if I deliver it to the state next to me, about 45 minutes away. Luckily, my car is good on gas so I told her for $15 I'd deliver it. She had no problem with that. I brought it out to West Virginia, my favorite state, got paid, and nothing out of the ordinary happened. The very next day, she posts this on a Facebook group we both belong to. My family has fallen on rough times and we currently do not have heat in our trailer. We're asking for someone to please donate a kerosene heater. My husband and I work too hard to not have heat for our kids. Must deliver. How rough though. You paid me $55 for a wee literally yesterday. I almost called her out on the group. I don't doubt she was living in poverty, but not once did she attempt to haggle or make any mention to me that she was having money issues. She just absolutely needed that wee and was willing to pay me more to deliver it the same day. To start off with, obviously, if this family is not doing a good job of budgeting their funds or perhaps they're not being honest with what funds they have and trying to abuse the internet, Facebook, whatever the case may be to get free things, taking advantage of other people's goodwill, that's messed up. At the same time, living in poverty sucks, and sometimes it's a kid's birthday or it is Christmas, and you wanna spend the 50 bucks to make your kids happy. I also understand that. More importantly, however, the Wii came out in November of 2006, and the fact that literally 13 years later, it's still worth about 30% of its original MSRP. For an electronic device, that's damn near incredible. Hey, you do album covers, right? My daughter, 13 years old, has a band. I want to surprise her for her birthday. Could you do that? Yeah, I could do that. We then discuss the design. Yeah, that design seems fine. Okay, it'll be 25 euro and will most likely take one to two days. Is that okay? 10. Excuse me? I'll pay you 10 euro. Sorry, but the price is non-negotiable. If you're not willing to pay, I won't do it. You're joking. 15, final offer. Hello? No. Great. Day ruined, daughter's throwing a tantrum. Hope you feel good about yourself. But... How could your daughter be throwing a tantrum over something that was supposed to be a surprise for her? My coworker had a baby girl last week, and to celebrate, he took us all out to lunch. My other coworker ordered an extra steak and two slices of cheesecake to take out. When some of us asked her why, she said it was because it was, quote, free. She even knew he was paying. Honestly, I don't even know if that's a choosing beggar, that's just someone being a horrible, horrible person. Jesus. Searching for a photographer for my wedding, here are my requirements. Must be willing to do job for free. Must have at least eight years of experience, must be at the wedding all the time, no breaks, and must bring your own food and drinks. What are they getting paid in? Not even exposure, like emotional satisfaction? Self-fulfillment? Well, I'll tell you. None of those things keep the lights on. Is it still available? Yes, it's still available. Can you bring it to me? Where are you located? I live in Milwaukee. You want me to drive from Michigan to Wisconsin? 
Yeah, I'll give you 159. That's all I got. Huh? That's a tempting multi-state offer, but I think I'm gonna have to pass. I just want a boyfriend that will be giving me 70% out of his daily income. But your Twitter name is Miss Independent? Yeah, it's a choosing beggar, because she sure as hell is, but it's also quit your BS, it's murder by words, and if that is her Twitter handle, it's suicide by words. Throw in the r slash nice girls aspect, and boom, we've got it again. The classic Reddit religion pentapostalism. CB. What do you mean you won't pay to have this free dress you've given me professionally tailored to fit me? I recently did a lot of spring cleaning and got rid of so much stuff that had just been taking up space. Donated some things, made a couple bucks selling others. I won't lie, that felt good. Marie Kondo knows what's up. Anyway, I had three bridesmaid dresses that had only been worn to one wedding apiece. I held on to them by telling myself that I'd need a fancy cocktail type dress at some point. Two to five years later, they had still never been worn again. Decided it was time to let go. A friend told me about a local Facebook group she was in where people give bridesmaid, wedding, and prom dresses away to those who are in a bind and couldn't afford brand new or retail. Cool concept. So I took some photos of the dresses, posted the sizes, and put them up for grabs. Almost immediately, a woman commented on the photos of my favorite of the three, a really modern, vibrant red lace number. She said she needed a dress for her cousin's wedding, said she loved it and that it was even her size. She lived pretty close by, too. Perfect. She messaged me her phone number and we arranged for me to drop the dress off to her as she didn't have a car. She was very friendly and kept thanking me through texts. I was so glad she loved the dress and didn't mind bringing it to her as she only lived a 5 minute drive from me. The next day she calls me to thank me once again and asks when I'll be dropping by. I get in my car and head to her address. First thing I notice is that there's two cars parked in her driveway. Uh, you know, maybe they're her friends or something? She answers the door, we exchange pleasantries, and I hand her the dress. Oh, would you mind waiting here so that you can zip it all the way up? I want to try it on, I'm just so excited, she says. I agree to wait on a small bench right outside her front door while she runs to put it on. She comes back outside and, oh boy, I can see on her face that she isn't happy. The dress is a bit too small. Still, though, she insists on me attempting to zip it up. I try my best but can't get the zipper past her midsection. This is when this formerly sweet seeming lady goes full choosing beggar on me. First, she nonchalantly makes a comment about the size. You said this is a size 7? <laughs> There's no way, you've got that wrong. I'm a 6 usually, this is just ridiculous. I inform her that there is a tag inside and that I'm not mistaken on the size. For some reason this comment was offensive to her. She turns beet red, almost matching the dress color. She starts raising her voice a bit. Well, so now what are we gonna do? You promised me this dress and I can't afford one right now. I don't really know what to say, but then remember that a year ago my sister had gone to a seamstress who was able to expand a dress due to her baby bump. So I mentioned that I could get the info of a seamstress who might be able to add a panel and fit the dress to her frame. She had stated that this was her dream dress, so if this really was the case, the tailor may be able to work her magic. She erupted. You promised me this dress, so how fast can she get it done if you take it to there? This is so inconvenient. I calmly tell her that she'd be the one who would have to take the dress to the seamstress so that she can try it on and have her see if and where altercations could be made. CB. Well, what day can you go? I need this done immediately. Oh, I won't have to go. I'll send you her number and you can schedule it with her directly. Excuse me? So you expect me to pay to have this horrible dress fixed when you were giving it away for free? Well, you surely can't expect me to give you the dress free and pay to have it altered. Wow, I can't believe this. So you promised me a free dress up front, but now you're saying I have to pay for it? You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm dumbfounded at this point. I legitimately don't know what to say, because I no longer needed or wanted the dress. I chose to just walk away back toward my car. She screamed, you promised, about seven times before I could get out of there. 
That evening, she went into the Gound gifting group and made an entire post about me being a bad person for not helping someone truly in need. I explained the situation in the comments to the best of my ability. Wouldn't you know? Someone in the group who does alterations offered to do it for her for free. I left that group. Now, sizing varies a lot for all kinds of clothing, whether it's just small, medium, large, and more importantly, it varies a ton in women's clothing. Women's clothing sizes suck. They're incredibly inconsistent even within brands, so the fact that this woman for probably an unknown dress brand thought that a size 7 was guaranteed to fit her, well, she was setting herself up for disappointment. While yes, it's awesome to see people trying to help people in need, and at first, this turns out to be choosing beggars seemed like a good person, the fact that she was thanking OP so profusely through text messages, the fact that someone did offer alterations for free makes me a little bit anxious because it means that there's not a chance this woman is learning her lesson. She got irrationally upset in a very choosing beggar kind of fashion, decided to make a whole post about it even though all of us in retrospect can see that that was not the right move, and yet she got what she wanted at the end of the day. I don't really know what to say about that. I only have cash, but I have a half hour if you'd want to meet. How much are you willing to pay? Can you pay more than a hundred? Unfortunately not. I have a hundred dollars cash on me right now. Oh, okay, I kinda want more, since I paid almost two hundred for it. Oh yeah, I totally understand, no worries. I'm moving soon, so I don't have a bunch of extra money. Hope you find someone. Can you not afford like 120? Or like 110? Ooh, by that timestamp, it looks like she messaged again, but I don't know what it says, and I kind of want to. College student doesn't like his grade. I teach a junior level college class at a university, so typically 20 to 24 year olds. A big portion of the grade is that the students have to give in-class speeches slash presentations. Last semester, I had a student who rarely attended class. Basically, every assignment was at least a week or two late. Whenever a major deadline came up, I'd get an email with some excuse. In this one semester, this dude used as excuses, grandma died, his mom was diagnosed with cancer, his niece was kidnapped, he had a medical emergency, he was in a car accident, and the cherry on top, his stepmom was diagnosed with cancer. Guess he ran out of excuses and had to reuse one. Now, I can't know totally for sure that these excuses are made up. They almost certainly are, but I can't prove that they are. And what am I gonna do? Investigate to find out? So basically, I treat excuses like these as if they're real, even if I don't think they are because I don't want to crack down hard on someone actually going through an emergency. This is why some teachers are such dicks, because we get lied to so much that some start thinking all excuses are just BS. Since my class involves presentation and speeches, that's class time that's set aside for students to do that. And if you let me know ahead of time that you can't make it, that's one thing. It's another thing when you just don't show up to class on the day you're supposed to present, which wastes class time, and then two days later, send me an email saying that your mom just got diagnosed with cancer. Even if that's true, there's no reason you couldn't have notified me that you would be missing that class period. I mean, if you were in a car accident on the way to class, I can understand not immediately emailing me that you won't make it in. So anyway, as the semester's winding down, this kid is finally trying to give his presentations. He wants to make up all three of his presentations in the last two class periods of the semester. It's not possible because other students are scheduled and it's pushing it to let him do two of them. So I let him do two of the three, which honestly is more lenient than probably any of my colleagues would have done. So he gives his two presentations in the last two classes. He gets a zero for the one he couldn't give and a C minus and a D on the two he gave. The speeches made common mistakes that I warned against in class, but he wasn't there to learn that, and there were points off for the fact that he was making up for no warning slash no shows. Without the lateness penalty, they were C plus speeches at best. Then I started getting emails complaining about his grades. I lay out how lenient I've been, not just on those speeches, but all the assignments, how many of my colleagues wouldn't even allow him some of this makeup at all, and I've been allowing it and not marking him down very significantly. That doesn't satisfy him. He starts criticizing other students' speeches. He goes on this rant about how his speeches were superior to the other speeches he saw in class, and that his speeches don't deserve C's. I'm like, 
A, you rarely came to class, so don't start telling me you know better than I do how your speech compares to your classmates. B, you don't know what grades those speeches got, so how can you compare them? C, you cannot objectively evaluate your own speeches, and D, these are makeup speeches, which I could have not allowed you to make up at all, and you could have had zeros. He's still not satisfied. This went back and forth several times. He'd write an email, then write another one four minutes later before I could respond. I got tired of arguing and told him I wasn't adjusting the grades, and pointed him in the direction of the grade appeal policy, figuring he wouldn't actually appeal. Guess who went to the department chair's office to appeal his grade? Which isn't even the way to do it, and I even pointed him to the proper way to appeal. My department chair basically laughed him out of her office, and told him she would have flunked him and administratively dropped him from her class. Alright, so many of you may know I am a college student, and I can tell you, without a single doubt in my mind, anything close to that level of missing work by 99% of all professors would be an immediate fail. Most professors have policies in place that if you don't notify them ahead of time that an assignment will be late or a presentation in this case will be late, it's docked a full letter grade for every day that it's missing. This kid completed a presentation or an in-class speech, presumably weeks after its due date, also presumably without immediate or reasonable cause for him missing that presentation, and he got a C, and he has the absolute audacity to complain about that. Thank you to everyone who watched this video, be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content, drop a like if you liked the video, and I will see you all tomorrow.